Hi, everybody. I am Karen Monroe. I am the ACRL Vice President at the moment, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to ACRL's 2019-20 Leadership Class. Thank you so much for volunteering your time and your expertise to ACRL. We appreciate your commitment. We could not accomplish what we do without your participation, and we are looking forward to working with you in the next year. So based on feedback that we've had in previous years, we are continuing to do this orientation, the virtual leader orientation with a flipped classroom format. Uh, we hope that by doing it this way and giving you the opportunity to watch this in advance, it gives us more time to address specific questions that you have when we have our live session on May 23rd. You'll have a chance to evaluate this format after we do the face-to-face -face session and we look forward to hearing what you have to say about it. Throughout this whole presentation, we will reference some useful websites. You will see a link to the companion document with these, all the links that we discuss. It's been shared with you and it's posted in the description of this recording as well. At the live meeting on the 23rd, ACRL staff and board leaders will be on hand to answer questions and to give you highlights and updates. And if you're not available for that uh, live session, staff and leaders are always happy to take questions by phone or email. We want you to have the tools that you need to succeed. So what do we want to do today? Our outcomes that we'd like to accomplish today are, first, we want to give you a better understanding of ACRL as an association and as a division of ALA, so that you have a better understanding of how we all work together. We want you to understand expectations for you as part of the leadership class, and we want you to know how to get things done in ACRL. The, the session is going to focus on a lot of the nitty gritty of working with ACRL, but I also want to just take a moment to say how rewarding it's been to be in a leadership position with the association for me in the last year. I've been vice president for this past year. Uh, I've had the opportunity to learn a lot about ACRL and to work on issues that I think are important to our profession overall. I also have a renewed appreciation for other ACRL members and member leaders like yourselves. This is a large and ambitious uh, association. It accomplishes an amazing amount, and it does that thanks to the contributions of the staff and the members, everyone who's so dedicated to the work we're doing. I'll say more about that in a minute. But for now, I just want to say I'm looking forward to working with you all as ACRL president in the coming year. So leadership class, what does that mean? So you are part of ACRL's leadership team. That means that we're counting on you to help ACRL advance its strategic plan, which is called the Plan for Excellence. And we share your work in the ACRL annual report, which is published each December in CNRL News. We also count on you to help create an inclusive community within ACRL. We want you to be engaged in a productive and healthy and enjoyable way. And we need you to be the kind of leader who makes all the member volunteers that you work with feel the same. We'll make a great team together. We know each of you will contribute to ACRL's success. We do our work throughout the year. We've traditionally met face-to-face -face two times per year at the Leadership Council which takes place on Friday afternoon during the ALA Midwinter Meeting and Annual Conference. This is preceded by a fun reception where you can chat informally with other ACRL leaders and colleagues. However, the last ALA Midwinter Meeting, you may be aware already, is planned for 2020. And following that, we should see a rebranded event, event uh, which will replace, we expect will replace Midwinter. ACRL Board, is uh, currently working to see if the reimagined conference is a productive place for us to continue to engage as academic librarians. And we will keep you all up to date on uh, what we learn and what we discuss. So let's turn uh, to taking a quick look at ACRL's structure. Okay, so each and every ACRL leader is important to the profession and the association you have an important role in helping ACRL advance the strategic plan, the plan for excellence that we just mentioned. Moreover, you are essential in recruiting and fostering other emerging leaders who will be the leaders for our future. The ACRL Board of Directors, which you can see there on the slide, has general oversight and direction of the affairs of the association. It conducts all of the business pertaining to the association and it has the authority to make decisions and speak on behalf of the association. 
And then you'll see in the blue there, division level committees. These are committees charged by the board to accomplish specific association business, to advise the board, or to advance the association's strategic goals. So again, goals from the plan for excellence. The vice president and president elect appoints member volunteers to serve on these committees. So that is a, an activity that I've been engaged in for the last uh, month or so. You'll also see that we have three other boxes on this slide. These are ACRL communities of practice, which includes sections, interest groups, and discussion groups. Uh, these are, they offer specialized uh, ways for members to be engaged according to their discipline, their domain, their work interest. Uh, you might be familiar with these as, as it's often a, a, one of the first ways that members get involved in ACRL. Uh, communities of practice are approved by the board and they have significant autonomy in determining their own goals and how to best accomplish them. Section vice chairs appoint member volunteers to serve on their committees just the same way that the vice chair for ACRL appoints volunteers to serve on the division level committees. So now moving back to the ACRL plan for excellence, which has been mentioned already a couple of times. Uh, I want to say I've been very uh, pleased and interested and I've really enjoyed working with an association that is as strategic minded as ACRL. I hope that you will all find some satisfaction in uh, participating in some way in the elements of the strategic plan. Uh, you can see from the, the slide that ACRL has uh, four strategic goals. And that's actually uh, expanded a little bit, so we'll discuss that. But the four strategic goal areas are the value of academic libraries, student learning, research and scholarly environment, and new roles in changing landscapes. ACRL also now has a core commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion. I'll talk more about that in the next slides. So as the Higher Education Association for Librarians, we lead academic and research libraries and librarians in advancing learning and transforming scholarship by focusing on these strategic goal areas. We do it by having specific objectives and carefully measuring and monitoring our progress. If you haven't done so before, I really encourage you to take a look at the Plan for Excellence on the ACRL website and review it with your committee or your team. The URL to the plan is included in the handout that was sent with this presentation recording. So take a look at ACRL's core purpose. This is a commonality that keeps our leadership team focused and connected and engaged. So uh, you may also know that we have uh, enabling programs and services, which are um, up on the top on the slide. These are things like budget and finance and professional development, publications, membership, and, and other operational support. In tandem with the committees and communities of practice, these keep the association responsive to the needs of academic and research librarians. So we are very eager to have your ideas and your leadership in developing webinars or discussion forums, publications, or any other resources that meet the needs of the community. So later on a bit in this presentation, you will learn how you can share your work with the board of directors. I mentioned this in our last slide. I'm just going to uh, turn back to the uh, core commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion. I am uh, very happy to share that the ACL board approved in fall of 2018 this new core commitment and added it to the ACRL plan for excellence. The goal of the core commitment is for equity, diversity, and inclusion to permeate all areas of the association so that we are poised to do, offer the best support for equitable, inclusive, and diverse librarianship. When the board approved that commitment, revisions were also made to all of the four goal areas in the plan for excellence to incorporate EDI in their work. Other governance changes to support EDI have included renaming the Diversity Committee to the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee and updating the charge of the Budget and Finance Committee. Being a little bit more on this same theme, one program that ACRL has recently developed to support EDI is the ACRL Diversity Alliance. The Diversity Alliance's goal is to increase the hiring pipeline of qualified and talented individuals from underrepresented racial and ethnic groups. Since its inception in 2017, the ACRL Diversity Alliance has provided a network for member institutions that commit to at least a two-year diversity residency at their libraries. 
There are currently over 40 members of the Diversity Alliance. Uh, institutional members, I should point out. Those are uh, associations, not individuals. Those are uh, university libraries. ACRL is looking to grow the program even further and to offer more benefits as it dedicates more resources to support the new core commitment. So on the next slide, I will share some of the updates that we have already implemented with the goal to make the appointment process more transparent and inclusive. So as uh, ACRL president-elect, I mentioned I have been working uh, for the last month or so on making lots of committee appointments. I've been working with the appointments committee to complete the 2019-2020 division level committee appointments. At the same time as the committee appointments, sections are also completing their appointments. Interest and discussion groups follow a separate process. More on the appointments process for your group will be shared a little bit later on. This year, I worked with a board working group to review and make the appointments process more inclusive and transparent. Appointments marketing was updated to include more welcoming language on the ACRL volunteer form, webpage, and on social media. Members who volunteered for a committee or section appointment had the option to answer several demographic questions, and ACRL has compiled that data. My goal is to share a summary, summary report when the majority of appointments have been completed a little later in the spring. ACRL will continue to include these optional demographic questions so that we can better understand and work to make the appointments, appointments process more inclusive. What else is happening with EDI and ACRL is quite a bit. So in addition to appointments, which we talked about, and the Diversity Alliance, the board and ACRL staff are updating a lot of, of, of uh, other work that ACRL does to better create more welcoming and inclusive environments. This includes EDI training for presenters, governance groups, and staff. ACRL president, Lauren Presley, her president's program committee has focused their work on the topic of EDI this year and has created an excellent online EDI discussion series blog, which is now available on the ACRL LibGuide platform. In addition to that, her planning committee also hosted a very well attended session at the most recent midwinter, which was titled Climbing the Stairs to Diversity and Inclusion Success. At annual in 2019 in DC, the next part of the EDI program series, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Leadership, Where Do We Go From Here, will be held Saturday, June 22nd. So if you'll be there, I hope you can make that, that program. It's gonna be excellent. In my own role next year as president, I'm working with my planning committee to prepare a president's program that will carry on from this program this year and, and focus on an EDI topic as well at the 2020 annual conference, which will be in Chicago. The recent ACRL 29 conference theme, so this is this, uh, as I'm recording this, this is next week's ACRL 2019 conference in Cleveland. Uh, the theme was taking charge of your narrative. And this year's conference includes keynotes, programs, and activities with an EDI focus. The Diversity Alliance also held a pre-conference called Taking Charge of Your Narrative, which sought to actively engage resident academic, academic librarians, providing a format to focus on their career plans. I have to say I'm really pleased with the progress that's already in motion on EDI front in ACRL. I'm looking forward to the ways that ACRL and the board can continue to work on the core commitment in the future. Next uh, up, ACRL Executive Director Mary Ellen Davis will share with you some background information about ALA and ACRL and the communication channels that are available to you. Hello, I am Mary Ellen Davis, ACRL Executive Director, and I am also looking forward to working with you this year. I want to join Karen in thanking you for your willingness to take on this leadership role. We want to support and encourage your creativity and contributions to the profession. Now I'm going to give you some background information on ACRL and ALA. ALA is one legal entity of which ACRL is part. ACRL was the first division created in ALA in 1940 and it's still the largest division of the association. ACRL has many member groups to address your interests as well as 44 separately incorporated chapters. Now in the eyes of the Internal Revenue Service, ALA is a 501c3 organization, which means that they see us as a charitable, educational, nonprofit organization for the public benefit. They don't see us as a professional association. 
Now, what does this mean for you in your ACRL role? This status puts some limits on the amount of lobbying and political activity, and I know that politics can create some real passions. So we cannot have any political speech, no discussion supporting or opposing candidates on any ALA or ACRL resources or when you are using your ACRL title. And the 2020 campaigning has already started, so we need to be careful. We cannot organize boycotts, and a boycott would include someone calling on others to take the same action with respect to a particular company. And we can't make defamatory remarks about others. Now, these are not free speech issues. These are tax issues, and we don't want ALA to lose its tax-exempt status. If you're in doubt, feel free to contact me. Now, while we can't take positions on specific candidates, ALA and ASRL can take positions on issues. For example, last year, the White House proposed eliminating the Institute of Museum and Library Services, our IMLS, and slashed millions of dollars in federal funding for libraries. A year later, thanks to many of you for your tireless advocacy efforts, the FY19 IMLS budget has about $2 million more than it had in FY 2018. But unfortunately, the President's FY20 budget includes a proposed elimination of IMLS funding for the third time. The ALA Washington office organized Dear Appropriator letters, which were sent by ALA advocates in March 2019. Thanks to the many of you who advocated and contacted your representatives through the ALA Action Center. We expect that we will have to keep reminding Congress that libraries are essential to their communities. You can expect to hear from ALA and ACRL as we encourage you to contact your representatives. We will release action alerts and updates through ACRL communication channels, such as the ACRL Insider and social media. I also encourage you to visit the ALA Action Center website on ways to be a library advocate. Now let's look at the financial relationship between ALA and ACRL as it exists today. And I say as it exists today because the ALA Steering Committee on Organizational Effectiveness, known as SCOE, is working to develop new models for the organization that they plan to present to members at the ALA conference. And SCOE has called for the operating agreement between ALA and its divisions to be renegotiated. Your voice is important in determining the type of organization you want. Now, I mentioned the operating agreement, and very briefly, it describes the financial relationship between ALA and its divisions. Here are some key points. Division budgets must be self-sustaining. Divisions get no direct financial ALA, ACRL revenues, which include dues, registrations, sales of publications, advertising, etc., all go to cover ACRL's expenses, including all personnel costs. Divisions pay ALA overhead through an indirect cost rate on non-dues revenue. This year, it's 26.4%. For example, every dollar of your ACRL conference registration gives 26.4 cents directly to ALA to support both operational services such as IT, legal, HR, finance, and the library, and mission work such as advocacy, research, intellectual freedom, etc. And as the association begins to reconsider its financial relationship, the ACRL budget and finance chair, officers, and I will keep you apprised of how this might affect ACRL and your work with us. Now let me go into a little bit more detail on the streams of change at ALA. As I mentioned, SCOE is looking at organizational effectiveness and governance. In addition to this, ALA has five other streams of change. It has put up its headquarters building for sale, and the ALA board has approved an investment or deficit budget. There's been a membership and communication study. There's been an assessment of IT, a goal of stronger chapter state relationships to strengthen our advocacy, and plans to reimagine ALA's midwinter meeting into a new conference beginning in 2021. Now, SCOE, who was working on the organizational effectiveness uh, investigation, has, was formed in June 2018, and ACRL board member Emily Daly represents ACRL on the steering committee. SCOE representatives shared their ideas with the ACRL Leadership Council at Midwinter 2019, and they'll also be coming to the Leadership Council this summer. They've held a webinar, and they'll be looking for additional ways to engage with the members to ensure that a reorganized ALA represents the ALA that can best work for and with you.
The ACRL board will stay apprised of the work of SCOE and other groups within ALA that are working on these six streams of change. As more information becomes available, the board will share updates with ACRL members through ACRL communication channels and tell you how you can share your input with those leading these changes. The board welcomes any feedback or questions and invites you to reach out to us at any time. The board roster can be found in the handout included with this presentation and contact information is available upon logging into the ALA website with your ALA credentials. Now let's look at a few policies starting with communications. As an ACRL leader, you may be asked to comment, <clears throat> send a letter of support, or want your membership group to take a stand on an issue. But only the ACRL board is authorized to speak for ACRL. For example, if you get a call from a reporter, you may comment as an individual, or you can comment as a librarian with your institutional hat on, but not if you are using your ACRL title. This is reserved for the ACRL board. The board does respond promptly to requests from units to take action. This happened a couple years ago when the STS leadership and the ACRL liaison to AAAS wanted ACRL to join the March for Science. Since units of ACRL cannot speak for or make the decision to join on behalf of the entire organization, the ACRL board took a virtual vote to approve joining the march and encouraged ACRL members to attend March, the March for Science or satellite marches being held around the country. There is also an informal external communication, and this is important with ACRL's work in the higher ed community. This happens on many levels through the work of individuals, sections, interest groups, ACRL officers, staff, and the External Liaisons Committee, which is formerly known as the Liaisons Coordinating Committee. This External Liaisons Committee offers a liaison assembly for all members who are working with other organizations so that we can share ideas. ACRL goal area committees have developed talking points that ACRL liaisons might use when meeting with other groups. Your membership group might have issues that would be of interest to liaisons, and I know they would welcome your suggested talking points. Let's look at a few other pertinent policies. It's very easy to survey members to see what they want these days. SurveyMonkey and other free tools make it easy to do yourself. But please do not survey beyond your own immediate membership group without first checking in with the ACRL office. We want you to check in with us for a couple of reasons. We want to avoid member survey fatigue, so we'll know how many people are doing surveys and at what times. We want to avoid duplication, and we want to help you have the highest quality of your survey. We can ask for assistance from ALA's research office or other experts in research methodology to review questionnaires. Even if you're only surveying your membership group, we encourage you to notify your staff liaison for a quick review. Once your survey is approved, you can work with the staff to determine the best way to send it out. Another policy you should be aware of is that ACRL and ALA have the right of first refusal on the work that you do within your membership group. Now, ACRL is a publisher and an online learning provider. We know you have many creative ideas, and ACRL would like to be the first to consider how to publish your unit's work or to offer a webinar on the topic. When you volunteer for ACRL, you are serving on behalf of the profession, so please check with ACRL content strategist Erin Nevius to propose a topic. Now let's look at some internal communications. To some, ACRL can seem like a complex organization, and we do have many committees and many communities of practice all working towards ACRL's core purpose and key goals. As an ACRL leader, you have a key role in connecting the members of your community with ACRL's big picture and helping them feel part of this wonderful, diverse, and inclusive community. Communication also helps ensure that you are not unintentionally duplicating the efforts of another ACRL unit. ACRL has a number of tools to help you communicate, which you'll hear more about later in this session. And it's a good idea to keep with, up with items that the ACRL board is discussing, and there'll be times when you will need to work with the ACRL board. Now, what are those times, and how do you get the board's attention and work with them? Well, I already mentioned the March for Science as one example. Here are a few more. The board approves standards and guidelines developed by committees, task forces, and communities of practice. 
the board also approves changes to division level committee charges, as well as creation, renewal, dissolution of section interest groups and discussion groups. And the board approves either new awards or changes to award criteria. Recently, the instruction section requested changes to the Miriam Dudley Instruction Librarian Award. If you want the board to take an official action, then we ask that you work with your staff and board liaisons to fill out a board of director action form. A link to the form is included in the handout for this presentation. Currently, every ACRL unit has a staff liaison. In addition, every division level committee and every section also has a board liaison. The staff and board liaisons are your team. If you're not sure whether or when to communicate with the board, ask your board or staff liaison and they'll be glad to help. We announce deadlines for reports or actions via electronic discussion lists and ALA Connect. We ask that you turn in items several weeks prior to the conference so the board has time to thoughtfully review and consider your request. But the board also works virtually so your items do not have to wait until midwinter or annual conference for action. ACRL units are most effective when there's good communication among the group and you as leader are uniquely poised to model that good communication. So first you need to know who's in your group. How do you know that? Well, ACRL has a web-based directory of leadership to provide contact information for members of your group. And here you see the directory of leadership. Now, specific contact information is only visible to ACRL members to protect your privacy. And by logging into the website, you can view the full roster. These rosters are dynamically linked to the contact information in ALA's membership database. So please encourage your group members to keep their ALA records up to date. Though the membership year begins July 1st, now is a great time for you as a leader to review the rosters, reach out to your colleagues, and introduce yourself. ACRL also provides communication opportunities at face-to-face -face events. Let's take a look at the upcoming ones. I referred to the Leadership Council several times, and you are now invited because you're part of the ACRL leadership class, and you together make up a great brain trust. We use the time at Leadership Council to get your input on professional and organizational issues. For example, that's where we develop the ideas for ACRL's strategic plan, the plan for excellence. And the board added a fourth goal to that plan based on your feedback at Leadership Council. We share the thinking of the board on any new initiatives or governance or structural changes. For example, if we're thinking of a bylaws change or membership changes uh, to groups. We let you know about upcoming ALA changes or initiatives, the work of SCOE that I mentioned earlier. And we provide speakers and professional development opportunities. For example, presentations on equity, diversity, and inclusion. At this summer's Leadership Council and Membership Meeting, we'll hear from SCOE about proposed new models for the association. They want your feedback, so I hope you or someone from your group will be able to attend. In keeping with ACRL's core commitment to EDI, we have also invited a strategic diversity consultant to help us learn more about how to be strong allies. Recognizing that some groups, such as IS, only meet virtually and recognizing that travel funds are tight so that not all of you will be able to join us in DC, we will send out some materials in advance so that you can recreate these conversations within your own ACRL groups. And we encourage you to do that if you will be there face to face as well. This session is preceded by a community social, which is a hosted lunch and is an opportunity to meet and build your network with other ACRL leaders. I hope to see you at both the Community Social and the Leadership Council in Washington, D.C. this June. And if we haven't met yet, I hope we'll, we will meet there. And please do stop and introduce yourself. And now I'd like to turn it over to Associate Director Mary Jane Petrowski, who will review important deadlines as well as budgets and professional development opportunities. Thank you, Mary Ellen. I'm Mary Jane Petrowski, and I look forward to meeting all of you at the next Leadership Council in Washington, D.C. During this segment, I'll review some important deadlines as well as budgets and professional development opportunities. You'll be glad to know that ACRL staff will give you abundant notice of all these upcoming dates and deadlines via the committee chair's discussion list. So if you're coming onto a committee as a new chair or a vice chair, you will be able to access the ALA Connect community for your group as of July 1st. 
And Allison is going to provide more detail about work plan deadlines. So we'll come back to that. But generally, um, just want to remind everybody that ALA has an open meeting policy, and this extends to virtual meetings as well. So if you plan to hold a virtual meeting, we ask that you give 10 days notice in ALA Connect, post the agenda, and then the minutes, and send them to your staff liaison as well. In terms of minutes, we really suggest you prepare meeting highlights and summaries and just focus on recording the key actions or decisions that were made, as well as your next steps so everyone understands who is going to do what by when. Outgoing chairs have until July the 12th to submit their year-end reports and meeting highlights. And of course, next year, we'll remind you when it's your turn to file these reports. But um, I want everyone to know that the board does use these reports to assess our collective progress um, on the ACRL Plan for Excellence, and they do read them in preparation for their strategic planning meeting uh, coming up in September. A quick review of funding and reimbursement. Um, each division level committee receives a funding allocation of $150, and unused funds do not carry over to the next fiscal year. Since the ALA fiscal year ends on August 31st, all reimbursement requests are due by August 15th. Um, as the committee chair, we ask you approve um, any reimbursement requests coming from your committee members before sending them forward to your staff liaison. The ACRL annual budget does include unallocated funds for strategic initiatives, so if you do have an exciting idea for an initiative that requires funding and your board and staff liaisons can help you shepherd that request. And now we switch from funding to fundraising. Um, I'd like everyone to know that we are putting together a new um, 2021 conference scholarship fundraising campaign, and the chair uh, of the campaign will be reaching out to all of the incoming committee chairs and editorial board chairs to encourage your participation in the 2021 campaign. If you wish to raise funds for a name scholarship, which some committees do, um, it will be somewhere in the ballpark of $740. Uh, more on that to come. <laughs> on behalf of our 14 award committees, um, I'd like to flag one deadline that comes up every Friday, every first Friday in December. The awards committees would really appreciate your nominations because as leaders in the association, you are uniquely positioned to identify colleagues who are deserving of recognition, and I hope you will put this on your to-do list. ACRL offers several types of online learning, which I'll quickly review. The ACRL e-learning offerings focus on practical topics and issues. We offer both live, live webcast and multi-week online courses. Every year there is an open call for proposals for e-learning topics. So please contact uh, Margot Conahan, our manager of professional development. If you have ideas, we encourage you or your unit to submit or proposal for an e-learning webcast or course, we'll take care of scheduling and logistics for these events. We just need your good ideas. Um, ACRL division level committees are also welcome to develop content for online discussion forums, which are basically less formal sessions than e-learning. To ensure that your online education is visible to a broader audience, um, you will be asked to complete a simple form with details about your form, and Margo will work with you to ensure that your content is listed. We are currently offering uh, Zoom and Adobe uh, to host your virtual sessions. For online forums, you will be responsible basically for the logistics and the content, and the ACRL staff will work with you to publicize it. 
all discussion forums are archived and made available to members on the ACRL website. To schedule an online discussion forum, just submit a request via the ACRL virtual meeting LibCal, which is an online calendar. Sponsored ACRL choice webinars are free, um, and these presentations include topics such as digital publishing, research trends, and open access. And now I am um, pleased to turn the podium over to Allison Payne. Hello, I'm ACRL Program Manager for Strategic Initiatives, Allison Payne. I work with the Board of Directors, Budget and Finance Committee, and coordinate division level committee appointments. I also serve as the staff liaison to ACRL's Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, and I support ACRL's activities pertaining to ACRL's core commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Today, I'll be sharing information about appointments, online resources, and work plans. Earlier in this presentation, ACRL President-elect Karen Monroe spoke about how we made this year's appointments process more transparent and inclusive. In this slide, I'll go over some of the details about the process of appointment. As part of the 2019-2020 leadership class, your appointment was made by President-elect Karen Monroe, who was the appointing authority for all division-level committee appointments made this year. The incoming vice president will be the appointing authority for next year's cycle, which will run July 2020 through June 2021. Committee chairs will be contacted contacted by the ACRL Appointments Committee in late 2019 or early 2020 for recommendations for reappointment. Please note, committees do not make their own appointments. Appointment terms follow the membership year, which runs from July 1st through June 30th annually. The official call for 2020-2021 committee volunteers will go out in December 2019, and the volunteer deadline will be February 15th, 2020. The call for volunteers will be posted on ACRL Insider and other ACRL marketing channels. Always be on the lookout for opportunities to include more people and go beyond the usual suspects. The more volunteers in the database, the more people the vice president and the appointments committee will have to create strong matches for committee appointments. If a non-member attends your committee's meeting this summer in Washington, DC, let them know that they should volunteer through the online system. Volunteers must submit the volunteer form to demonstrate their commitment and to ensure they are considered. The volunteer form is only available to current members because all appointments must be, all appointees must be ACRL members and ALA members throughout the duration of their committee appointment. Every committee is assigned a board liaison who serves as a first point of contact for questions and advice based on the board's board members' knowledge of ACRL's mission, policies and procedures, and strategic goals. Board liaisons are assigned by the incoming president each June, so please be sure to check your roster in June to see who your board liaison will be. Here we have the governance team, which includes Mary Ellen, myself, Andy Lewis. Throughout the year, ACRL staff will communicate with you using face-to-face, -face, online, and virtual communication. We also encourage you to use these channels to communicate with other committee leaders and members. ACRL leaders can meet face-to-face -face at ALA Midwinter and ALA Annual Conferences. My colleague Elois will talk more about meeting scheduling later in this presentation. As leaders, you will be also be invited to the Leadership Council and Community Social that is held at each Midwinter and Annual Conference. Note, attendance at these meetings is not required, but you do, not, you do need to determine how your group will keep up with the broader work of ACRL and ALA if you do not attend. The board values your input. When possible, we will send table activities to units not attending the face-to-face -face leadership council meeting and ask for you to participate asynchronously. A little bit about ACRL email and blogs. ACRL publishes announcements of general interest about ACRL initiatives, programs, and services on ACRL Insider. You can subscribe to ACRL Insider updates by going to the Insider website and entering your email, which is included with the handout to this presentation. ACRL Update is an emailed newsletter that keeps you informed about ACRL activities, professional development opportunities, 
publications, and other items of interest in the academic and higher education community. It is emailed every two weeks. Details on how to subscribe are available in the companion document. So a little more about email communication. Current and past ACERA leaders are automatically, automatically subscribed to the ACERA leads discussion list. Association-wide updates, such as reports from the division counselor and calls for volunteers are posted here. Current chairs and newly appointed vice chairs are added to the committee chairs discussion list. This discussion list serves two purposes. Resources where you can help each other ask questions, share ideas with each other, help prevent reinvention of the wheel. You can also administrate administrative info about your leadership responsibilities are also shared here. We will push out reminders and timeline messages. ACERL also has social media. You please check out our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Your group can also use ALA Connect. This is the web platform where your group can work and you can post agendas, documents, and minutes. ALA launched a new ALA Connect in 2018. ALA Connect is where your committee work can take place. Committees can participate in online discussion forums and share documents. ALA Connect is a great place to store documents for future committee members. Documents you will want to keep in your committee's ALA Connect space include meeting agendas, meeting minutes, and your annual reports and work plans. Access to your committee's work in ALA Connect is tied to your ALA login so you will need to be a current member to contribute to your committee work in ALA Connect. Other features such as polling and collaborative workspaces are expected to be available in the coming year. To help fully roll out all the features of ALA Connect, ALA recently hired a part-time chief information officer. As new features in ALA Con Connect become available, ACRL staff will keep you updated. ACRL is pleased to offer LibGuides as a free service for our membership units, thanks to the generous support of SpringShare. This includes LibGuides, LibCal, and LibAnswers. LibGuides should not replace ALA Connect, but can be a great tool for publishing toolkits, FAQs, and bibliographies. ACRL has recently started using LibCal to schedule virtual meetings, which Elois will go over later in the presentation. At ACRO, we ask committees to report on past activities through an annual report template and to share future projects with the committee work plan. The year-end report will cover the 2018-2019 year, and the work plan will look ahead to 2019-2020. The combined report and work plan template is a great tool to transfer knowledge to incoming leadership. Annual work plans connect the committee work to the ACRO plan for excellence, strategic goal areas, and enabling programs and services. When completing your report and work plan, please make sure to include your committee leadership team, which includes the chair, vice chair, board liaison, and staff liaison. Please get in the habit of including your leadership team on email discussions so that everyone is on the same page throughout the year. The outgoing chair is responsible for completing the year-end report, and the incoming chair is responsible for the work plan. You will want to communicate with committee leadership to make sure the report and template are submitted together. This will help ensure a smooth transition each year. The process may seem a little complicated, but it really helps your committee focus on what needs to get done. Your board and staff liaisons are always available if you have any questions throughout the year. Please note that the four goal area committees, value of academic libraries, student learning, research and scholarly environment, and new roles and changing landscapes have a special reporting form and they will work with their board and staff liaisons to complete that form. Please note the timeline for completing the annual work plan. Report and work plan drafts are due shortly after annual conference. As leaders, you should be in communication with your board and staff liaisons if you have any questions throughout the process. Your board liaison will also approve the final work plan by August 9th in order to carry in order for you to carry out your work during the rest of the year. The final approved version of your work plan should be posted in ALA Connect. You should also send your work plans to me so that they can be shared with the ACRL Board of Directors. 
After work plans have been submitted, committees will work to execute planned projects during August 2019 through June 2020. Now let's hear from ACRL Program Coordinator Eloa Sharp regarding meetings. Hi everyone, I'm Eloa Sharp, ACRL Program Coordinator. I'll be sharing with you news about ACRL's virtual meeting process and face-to-face -face meetings at ALA conferences. The 2019 ALA Annual Conference in Washington, D.C. will be the third year that programs will be scheduled to better accommodate a smaller conference campus. As the saying goes, three is a churn. ALA staff will assign a date, time slot, and room location for all programs selected for presentation. These changes have been made based upon member feedback collected by the ALA Conference Committee and have generated positive feedback in recent conference evaluations. In the world of versatility, there are many ways to serve the professional development needs of members, including articles, standards, web resources, and pre-conferences. We encourage you to take some time to reevaluate, reinvigorate, and think about your PD wishes and consider an ALA annual conference program. The Professional Development Committee oversees the annual conference program process. Although the process is competitive and not every program idea will be accepted, it is still worth putting your idea out there. Who knows, you may be selected. Think positive. Currently, ALA provides about 20 program slots to ACRL at each annual conference. You do have a chance. ACRL division level committees, sections, interest groups, and individual ACRL members can submit proposals for annual conference programs. Proposals will be evaluated in the same way using the same selection criteria. Consider making the investment and submit your proposal. 2020 program proposals are due late August 2019 and notifications will be issued in October 2019. 2021 proposals will be due in August of 2020. You may want to utilize ALA Connect to start discussing your 2020 program topic and possible collaboration with other ACR units or individuals through a threaded discussion post. If you have additional questions, I recommend that you review Chapter 9 of the Guide to Policies and Procedures on the ACR website or contact ACRL Senior Program Officer, Megan Griffin. She'll be happy to answer your questions. Now, regarding the upcoming 2019-20 cycle, ALA will meet in Philadelphia for midwinter and in Chicago for annual conference. If you're interested in meeting face-to-face, -face, ACR staff will notify you of the process and deadlines for scheduling meetings at conference this fall. When you schedule a meeting, you also need to uh, request your AV. That is extremely important, such as projectors, screens, and microphones. However, virtual meetings are becoming more and more popular. So this is an option you may want to consider. Please note, ACR staff does not provide support for blended meetings at midwinter or conference. You would not use the virtual meeting lib calendar to request a blended meeting at ALA conferences. And ALA can only provide very limited support for blended meetings, which are meetings with some people in a conference room and others participating virtually. This is based on availability, connectivity, and it also depends on the conference city. You will need to request remote access AV by the deadline which will be sent via the committee chairs or section chairs interest groups listserv. Before I move on to the next slide, let me mention this per ALA policy. Business meetings may not be held at ALA conferences. ECRL is pleased to offer the use of its virtual meeting software for its membership groups. We have at this present time two softwares that you can use. That is Zoom. Zoom can hold up to 999 attendees and Adobe Connect holds up to 99 attendees. Zoom allows for voice over internet protocol and connectivity at the same time.
while Adobe Connect only supports vo voice over internet protocol. Committee meetings, section meetings, interest groups, discussion groups, they can be held in Adobe Connect or Zoom. It depends upon what your meeting needs are. To facilitate year-round work, you may want to meet virtually in, in between ALA conferences, or since you're not required to have face-to-face -face meetings at ALA conferences, you may exclusively meet online. It's your discretion and it's your choice. Scheduling a virtual meeting is easy, and you can use the ACRL virtual meeting LibCal to request your committee meeting or practice session. Did I say easy? Yes, I did. Simply go to ACRL virtual meeting LibGuide, select your room and time, enter your meeting information, and send it off for approval. It's just that simple. Please note that a request is not finalized, however, until you receive the confirmation message from me with the meeting link. As stated previously, LibCal is not where you would make a request for blended meetings. Those are the meetings that are at midwinter or annual conference where some individuals are on site and some are off site. For specific guidelines and instructions, please visit the ACRL virtual meeting lib guide. The open meetings policy applies to virtual as well as face-to-face -face meetings. You should publish your agenda and public notice of the meeting two weeks before the meeting in ALA Connect. That's important because you wanna make sure that that information is up and accessible to everyone. A public record of the meeting in the form of meeting highlights must be posted within 30 days of the meeting. Please note, formal minutes are not required, but basic notes that capture actions and major points should be posted to ALA Connect following the meeting. These minutes, if it's a committee, should also be sent to Allison Payne at apayne at ala.org. If it's a section, interest group, or discussion group, those minutes should be sent to Megan Griffin at mgriffin at ala.org, and that's so that they can be archived and shared with the ACRL Board of Directors. But wait, there are other great meeting methods such as conference calls or Uber conference. You can use any conference call service you have available or set up your own account at freeconferencecall.com. Or if you have less than 10 participants and you just need a quick committee meeting, you may want to consider Uber conference. And that website is www.uberconference.com. Now, to facilitate meeting scheduling, you may be interested in using the free Doodle Poll service. Again, these are all options that are available to you for you to use at your discretion based upon your individual meeting needs. To help facilitate meetings, you may want to review the tip sheet provided for ALA parliamentarian Ellie Mina. A link to the tip sheet is provided in the companion document, and you will have access to these resources in ALA Connect with your incoming term, which starts on July 1st of this year, 2019. Ellie Mina, ALA parliamentarian, offers guidance and advice regarding all aspects of planning, conducting, and managing effective meetings. Additional information on this can be available at ALA ACRL Initiative can be found in the article, Making the Meeting, Resources for Effective Meetings by Lisa Romero in the June 2008 issue of CNRL News. Now, some of the resources accessible to all current ALA members are Building the Foundation for Effective Meetings, Everybody loves an effective meeting because people's time is precious. And this is where you can learn how to develop a clear purpose for your meeting and establish ground rules for interaction during the meeting. Then there's roles of meeting chair, how to st strategically chair a meeting effectively and bring out the best in your committee members, your section members, your interest group members. And then there's avoiding chaotic, 
adversarial and aimless meetings. As I said, everyone's time is precious. So you wanna make sure that you're using your time effectively. And this is the way to analyze approaches and techniques that can be used to create productive and enjoyable meetings. Everyone likes a meeting that is not only productive, but engaging and enjoyable. And then there's the helpful tip sheets that's available in a Spanish version. Now I'm going to turn this over to Karen Monroe. So starting to wrap up now, uh, I have some next steps for everybody. First of all, I'd like you to make sure that your ALA Connect profile is up to date uh, so that we can make sure that we can be in touch with you. If, you. if you are willing and if you have a picture of yourself that you like, it would be terrific if you were willing to upload a, a picture of yourself to help us uh, to create community online for members. Um, I want to encourage you next to reach out and introduce yourself to your committee and welcome new members. I also really recommend that you talk to your outgo outgoing chair and familiarize yourself with the work of that group if you're not already well familiar with it. And finally, I uh, highly recommend that you read the work plan and the report from last year's committee's work and start thinking about what you and your committee will focus on in the coming year. So thank you so much for viewing this recorded presentation in advance of our uh, virtual face-to-face -face meeting in May. I hope you've made some notes about things that you want to know, have more information about or that you have questions about. I'm looking forward to meeting with you all in May and to answering any questions that you may have. And last but not least, look forward to seeing those of you who can be in DC um, and please make sure to fill out the evaluation form that's linked here.